It is now 15.01, and I call this meeting to order, public notice having been duly given, and a quorum being present, the meeting is duly constituted. The first order of business on the agenda is <coughs> approval of the agenda. I move to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favour? Opposed? Carried. Public participation. There being none, we'll move to adoption of the minutes of February 17th uh, Council Strategy Meeting, aka Council of the Whole, Committee of the Whole, whatever it is. That's why we call them Strategy Committee. Um, do we have to move in, move in second? Uh, so, uh, move in second. Discussion, I have one, no, I have a few things. Um, under, it's more a general comment, I don't know if we need it for now, but under three, for example, it would be useful for people to see the answer. Yes, um, if you recall, she was told that we were working on it, and that satisfied her. So yeah, it doesn't say it here. Do you want it to say, we told her we were working on it? Do you? Okay, yeah. we can add that in. So that, you know, when people, uh, A, go back and people who couldn't come and they, and they don't look at the video, they look at the thing. Did modify the last sentence, Ms. Wilkie uh, was advised this would be investigated. There we For go. example. Perfect. There. Okay. You know, that's simple. Yeah. Same again, five, the first bullet point under five. What was the answer? Um, yep. Under the fourth bullet point on section five, uh, Mandy informed council that she's been able, unable to touch on the bylaw and policy committee yet. What does that mean? That was the term, I was supposed to search out some terms of reference for you that I hadn't found at that point. So I think the wording can be tightened up on that. Like work on? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Doesn't matter, I just didn't know what it meant. No, I agree. It's not very clear. Um, <clears throat> under seven C, it's not Lions Bay School, it's Lions Bay uh, Early Years Care. Okay. Uh, D, what does D mean? Mayor Burr sent an email to Council on Strategic Planning. I was going to send an email. Uh, I think it was I, it was agreed that I was going to or something. You remember? I can have Shauna pull out the um, audio and, and listen and to it. And questioned where they stand between now and. So, do you want to table these until the next COTW well, just so that we can one. clarify them? Mm, I don't, yeah, do we need I to? I think you had sent some to us. Maybe that was one of them. I don't want to yeah. table if we don't have, absolutely have to. Well, I mean, if it's unclear, it should be made clear. And in order to do that, we'd have to go listen back to the audio. So, do you want to table these to the next COTW? You should guys, oh, what do you think? Do you care? I, I, don't, I don't know how much you need to. Elaborate on this stuff. Like, I just I don't recall the conversation either. Mm -hmm. So well, I recall a conversation, but I think it was offline. So I, I think that we were all talking about it, and I think we we're all in that mindset at that point in time. I don't remember if this was the time when we decided that I would send the current version of the strategy around. Yeah, yeah. and we would discuss it at the next uh, yeah. strategy meeting, which is today, and it is on the agenda. I, so is that statement accurate then? I think Smebo will send an email to Council on Strategic Planning okay. and ask where they stand, yep. period. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the number of conversations we've had where we've been, we've been thinking about, all, all of us have been thinking about it, and we're expecting stuff to come up. So, so I didn't go dive through my email looking for it. And then the, the action item under E should be under D. Got them. Okay, thank you. Good. That's all I had. Anybody else? Um, <coughs> two. The first bullet point under two. I was just wondering if that's been done. Letter to John West. What's that? The first bullet point? Yeah. We, can there was, we weren't doing anything. Oh, we we were discussing that there were options for a letter of support. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had a status from them. We can do that in Business Horizon as well. Yeah. It's just to correct things. It, there is no update. So. Okay, anything else to correct? So uh, the motion to adopt the minutes is out there. It has been seconded. All in favour? Uh, opposed? Carried? Okay. So Business Horizon, Helen's already mentioned that one. You good with that answer? I'm actually there isn't an update. I haven't heard back from them on the answer whether is there's no letter answer. of supports are being, have been, we haven't got one. 
Oh no, so we're, we we were going to write him to ask him if he would provide if he he would draft the letter of support for us. Remember at the meeting we went to, he says just let us know what you want and he'll. This was for the uh, new building Canada. This was for the new building Canada. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were going to ask if he if they had sent us a letter of support to go with our application. Yes. I don't have an update from them. I've asked, I posed the question, but she okay. couldn't answer it when I called her. Too late now. Now I'm just going to knock on the prime minister's door. Yeah. <laughs> we'll career it. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, Maybe I'll just mention it here because I don't think there's a spot for it in the agenda. Let me just check. No. Um, the current status of the early years thing. Uh, it's going quite well. They are in the, in the late stages of doing a design. Um, the school district has agreed to waive all rent in consideration of the Play School Association establishing a driveway so that the school bus can do a single without a back and forth. Um, they want it to happen where those two big storage things are, there and nowhere the else. ESS and the electrical? Uh, well, it's the school uh, emergency supplies, okay. not, not ESS. Oh, sorry. And it's not electrical as everybody thinks, it's just it's an old just a big old box. metal thing. It's full of water, it's full of water drums, containers. Is that right, Mr. Ender? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, yeah, one of them is actually ESS. They've been working on it in the last uh, number of months to clean it up and, and stuff. So it, it is an ESS container there on, hmm. on the uh, gravel field. I don't think the PAC knows that. Because when I was on the PAC, uh, it's the PAC that raises money to, to uh, refund that thing, uh, refill that thing, buy the, the, you know, the, the protein bars, the water, the lamps, the fuel, the I don't think ESS realizes that because they just went through it uh, a month and a half ago to reassess everything that's in there and deal with the water situation. Maybe we should get those two groups together. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> Helen, that's your department. Okay. Is that an actual one? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I would say so. <laughs> because PAC thinks it's theirs and ESS that, thinks it's theirs. That's uh, it. That's as, as Jim was saying earlier, that's the off-the-record action point you will remember. <laughs> well, I, mean, I just would hate to think that ESS says, well, we replaced these uh, protein bars five years ago, and PAC says that every two years, because PAC replaces it every two years. And I remember from my days on the PAC, it was two grand we spent. Yeah. Off the protein bars, now into the bigger picture. Uh, two grand. So, so, you know, unless you're hungry. The, uh, so, uh, school boards on side. School board's on site in a big way. Um, the design is underway. Uh, the application is underway. Um, they're talking about two trailers that will be done in a kind of funky architectural way with the correct amount of outdoor space, indoor space. Uh, the one wrinkle is that in order to get the full funding, they have to build a facility for 18 to 20 kids, which entails a lot more operating funds. But my understanding is that it only has to be built that way. It doesn't have to operate that way every mm -hmm. year. Um, once they have uh, adequate design plan, uh, Peter Dorsman and I will approach donors in the village. Peter being the guy, is obviously the school board trustee, and he has successfully approached the donors before, when he was chair of the PAC, um, to see if they will stump up somewhere between fifty and $150,000 to, to build a holistic project. That's great. Uh, CAO, is the mayor needs some kind of green light on that, doesn't he? In terms of Approaching the discussions? residents? I mean, we've just had the discussion. It, how, how, it depends how involved council is expecting to get. I really think you need to be at arm's length because it's, it's a private venture. It's a private venture that, that uh, the municipality, not the municipality, I guess that council has endorsed. Is that what we did? I think you can certainly support yeah. it. Uh, and, you, and you've been endorsed as our representative, yeah. sole right. representative. So yeah. to me, it looks mm. good. Yeah, no, I just approached them wearing my yeah. hat. Yes, so, but green light. I don't think it's. It could be easily described as a, as a community focused group that is an endorsed by council. Supported. Well, supported, supported by council. Supported by council. We've supported. already endorsed the mayor to act on our yeah. behalf, so yeah. it's a green light here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good. Okay, good. Uh, so that's all I had in Matters Horizon. Anyone else? Okay, so we move on to unfinished business. Anybody got any unfinished business they want to talk about? 
uh, legacy, the library, uh, near completion. I think uh, they're uh, they're painted. The books are in, uh, and I think the uh, CAO's son participated in that, as yeah. uh, says other <laughs> community members too. And I haven't heard on their grand opening, but I would certainly think once it gets around, we'll all be lining up for our tea and scones. Tea? Coffee, scones. Do you think we can coincide the two grand openings? That's what the library wants to do. Yeah. So I'm working with Anne-Marie. Okay. That. Yeah. Well, that would be good because it would get uh, well, much bigger crowd. Yeah. yeah, it's good. And, and it would be, yeah, be good for all kinds of good reasons. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thanks, Ron. Good. That's good. On budget. Under, I believe. Slightly. Well, I hope they intend to pat. They fix the bookshelves to the ceiling with some pieces of plywood. Yeah. I hope that gets slightly tarted up. And they've done their um, <coughs> friendly step up, I see. Yes, yeah. Yeah, which I'm sure at, the building inspector is going to have. At a very thrifty cost. I'm sure, but uh, I tripped on it when I left the library the other day, so. And I'm very spry. Spry. Anyone else? Unfinished business going, going. <coughs> Gone. New business. Strategic planning. I don't intend to spend a lot of time on this. This is only to get us chivied up. I printed seven. Thank you. I'll give Sean a mine for the record after. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll give one into the, the gallery. Can you just take... It's, it's collated. So now this is the first time that uh, Mandy and staff have actually seen this. Um, so just as a way of background, this is a document that has now, in its third iteration, having gone through uh, a discussion, a revision by email, correct me if I'm wrong, a second, revision, a second issue is this one. I, no, no, we did a second issue, then a rework, this is the third issue. Sorry, so... So this document was drafted, edited, circulated, and approved. It's not been approved by anybody. By this council to bring to this table outside of council meetings, just so I'm clear. No, I am bringing it as a consensus vision from my discussions with council I, I, But my question is, how, how, is, how is this document decided on, just so I'm clear? Uh, email circulation. Thank you. Correct? Draft version 3. Yeah, draft version 3, exactly. So here it sits in front of you. Uh, as I said, I don't intend to discuss it uh, unless there's anything that jumps out at you. This is getting close to what we want to approve. The reason why time is of the essence is that the staff has been asking for three months what this council's priorities are. It is in order. You notice the numbers, priority. I told you you'd be surprised to a certain extent in terms of uh, uh, what we chose as it was remarkable to me that I think we said there were, I can't remember, we, we put a whole bunch of parameters together and this is the order that each of the five came out with independently. This is a great list. I think so. I'm pleased and proud. Did you get this speed thing in the front of the village since I just saw the signage thing? There's a, this, not the speed trap, but the speed sign. Speed trap? <coughs> no. It says your, your speed no, no. I noticed it. Is but is it a portable? Yeah. What, 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 what was that? No, but uh, Sorry, I think I, I reported on the MOT thing. Uh, the other, but yeah. that is one of the, we have asked for six permanent. Your speed is signs. Yeah, three in each direction. Okay. Sorry, I saw it. And I Where do you down. see that? It's uh, for no, point number one, right hand side, bottom uh, arrow point. Okay. Well, it's in there anyway. Oh, it's messaging was clear. I was going now, too fast. The issues are, I think, probably well set and well defined. The deliverables are a different matter. We need to uh, include or exclude, include ones we haven't and exclude ones we have. So what I would ask is, in time for next COTW, you're pretty much at, at your final. And you've circulated it to me, I've consolidated it, and, and uh, well, maybe we go through one COTW on it, and if we like it, uh, we'll decide at that council meeting. Oh, sorry, did I say CRTW? 
So we haven't actually agreed on this. This is just a talking point. No, this is only consensus at this stage. Uh, nothing has been said, nothing has been agreed. And then you would like us to review? I'd like to come up with your final bid in time for me to consolidate it in, into a document. I it, sorry, I think it should be noted that it's not it's not a strategic plan. It's our priorities for this year, it's which is quite different plan. from it is. It's not a strategic yes. plan. Yes, no, it's yeah. priorities. Yeah. It is. It is an answer to staff's valid, legitimate, and pressing request for an indication of what this council's priorities are for for now, mm -hmm. so that so that staff can concentrate on the things that we have as priorities. Okay, that's all I intend to say on that. Uh, everybody cool? So conclude uh, that in before next meeting. Can yeah, discuss, if, can if I can have it by uh, next weekend, that'd be good. So that I can work it on in the weekend. Anything else, Mandy, uh, that you can think of to say there? I don't think so. I'm, I'm glad that it's on paper. <laughs> it's not, it's not real I'm, ha I'm happy to see it. Let me say that. Oh, you didn't believe it existed? <laughs> ah, yeah, no, yeah. no. I see a typo. Not at all. I'm just... Happy to see it brought forward so we can start setting some motion. Yeah, likewise. You can't just talk things out of your head. We have to put it on a list, look at it, review it, think about it, talk about it. And it's hard to do when you've got a fine number of meetings and things yes. to do. So we've got to just got to have discussions, think about it, look at it, and then when it's, when it's, when it's all been fixed, fished out, then we'll sit down and we'll be able to turn it into something we can act on. I agree, and I'll also tell you that it's timely that we're talking about the budget uh, now because I can tell you right now some of these things are potentially going to have to come off in light of what the, the budget realities are. And then also, also, in respect of the budget, maybe some things have to be on the budget because of our priorities. Absolutely. Right? Precisely. But this will also go from the 2015 to 2016 as a moving document, though, in a kind of a priorities four-year plan, shall we say? I'm hoping to have a strategic plan. Like well, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, that the strategic plan talks to a vision, yeah. uh, uh, you know, where do we see the, the, the community going? That, that's, a high, that's, a, that's a deeper and, and yeah. more uh, careful discussion. It also involves community. Yes, it does involve community input and feedback, although I would like to think that if we don't know what that is now, um, we haven't been paying attention. For this document, I see it need, it's a working document, and like for example, talking about support school in Lyme's Lyme Bay Elementary School before and after care preschool, and your early years is part of that as well. So, oh, that's, that's now childcare. You see, I just got uh, in fact, I'm going to. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not saying it. I whip this. Uh, you, you notice it's still warm. <laughs> There's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I told you there were typos. Um, yeah, I would say that it, it is a working document. It's a moving document. These deliverables will fall off the list as they're done or, or uh, deprioritized or whatever. The priorities are these community engagement, high livability, financial and infrastructural sustainability, valuing volunteers and good governance. Those are this council's priorities. And, and I was somewhere between gratified and joyful that, that we actually each came up with those independently. I think we have Helen to think, thank for the, the sort of the, the succinct statement thereof, but we all said the same thing. It's uncanny. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Uh, to preliminary budget, and I believe our preliminary budget person is approaching the table. Um, so included in this budget, we have um, labor as per contract, and now we have staff that all have contracts, so that is a fairly accurate number. 
an infrastructure master plan at $150,000, an official community plan at $40,000, an emergency management plan at $20,000, and we've done that all within a 4% tax increase. So that's sort of the assumption made on this first page. We've included those in there. Um, all incorporated into a 4% tax increase. We've also kept the capital at a minimum. In this draft budget, we've only included the, um, the previously um, committed to or approved capital that was in the 2014 to 2018 five-year plan. And we, um, on the second schedule, I've shown the impact that has on reserves. And then the final schedule is a supplementary request. So they, they're things that have come to us in a variety of means through emails, and we've listed them on the final schedule, and then staff have gone through and made their recommendations. And this entire package went to the Finance Committee for their review last Thursday. And there's another Finance Committee scheduled this Thursday where we will re-examine it with some further input and some answers to some questions that have come forward. Um, yes, so I just, I don't know if you want me to go through it or if you have questions. The approach you'd like? I think for uh, Councillors Bain, Hughes, and Watterson, uh, Mayor Burr, and mm -hmm. uh, the other staff members are very familiar with this. Uh, this is your chance for QA. Yes. So, actually, I'm not, I'm not familiar with any of this. Mm -hmm. And so actually what you had read up earlier was interesting with yes. that, because that's yes. what I was wondering. So with regards to expenditure, mm -hmm. the, for example, administrative services, there's a big figure. So for me, I, you know, I kind of would like to know what, mm -hmm. what the breakdown is. And then when you had mentioned 40,000 would be attributed to the OCP, I, yes. see it, I wouldn't even know that was there. Mm -hmm. So that was okay. my first question. Do we get to see a... Some yes, I can definitely example. provide that. We What this feeds in from a, a more detailed schedule, we literally start with every account in the general ledger and then we budget them on a line-by-line -line basis and then it flows into this summary. So I can definitely provide that. Um, I could probably, with the best way, be to just email it out to you, the great An executive yeah. summary is probably mm -hmm. what, what we're looking Especially with the big ticket items. Yeah. As we sort of considered this sort of the executive summary and then any yeah. questions for further detail you want, I can I can provide separately. So maybe at the end we could summarize sort of the takeaways that you would like me to send to you for further backup. Okay. And then how how did you decide what items should be put in and what shouldn't be given our limited resources? Is there a, like how is this decided? Like a priority list that you must do goes in and Needs uh, first uh, uh, short of any last minute ins, uh, and I'll throw this a misnomer here where, it, and one of the asks it's uh, Mayor Burr is showing asking for a variety of things. That's a misnomer. It represents all of us. Uh, but basically, all of the ins are all the hands that have gone up over the last three months. So I think staff has just collated them all and separated them into different areas. So that's the asks. As for the uh, the staff recommendations, I uh, defer to the CEO. Yeah. But um, basically, um, what Councillor McLaughlin was saying, we have that on the supplemental list. This is basically what we would call as close to a base budget as we could get. We would look at last year's budget, last year's actual. You know, we try to estimate as accurately possible our taxation. You know, going through the revenue, we can predict that quite accurately, the revenue. And then in terms of the expenses, again, we would look at what the actual expenses were last year. The biggest percentage of this expense is labor, and in a way that is a fixed number. Everyone has a contract, so the labor would be the biggest component of a lot of these numbers. And we would just keep, um, like I say, sort of the base budget, and we kept separate track of all of what we're calling the supplemental requests, with the exception because it had been really agreed by council infrastructure master plan. We did put this into this budget at 150,000. The um, official community plan at 40,000 and the emergency management plan. So it's really a base budget with the exception of those three things. And in terms of capital, as a starting point, we just really started with the capital that had already been approved in the 2014 budget that a lot of it has now gone into the grant, the small building grant. So we were actually required to, we were required to have that in our budget in order to apply for the grant. So there's no extra capital in here. So this sort of just becomes as a preliminary budget, the base amount, and then we were curious to see what we could get for 4%. So we're not saying that that is the tax increase. We just, we didn't want to add a lot of things in. We felt it was better to have sort of a base budget, list the supplementals, and then we can see 
discuss what the impact would be if we added something in or would we want to add something in and take something out and so it was sort of the, uh, the initial stab at it um, and we want discussion from that. This is no, by no means a final budget but we felt it was better to start with the sort of general budget practice is to start with the base, add in things you know you have to have, labor of course being the biggest component, and then listing everything else people would like to see. And I've tried to garner as much I could from what I've heard in the three weeks I've been here, but I'm, if I've missed something we could add it. And then the discussion becomes, you know, we could add this, this is the impact it would have on the tax rate if you're comfortable with that. What should we remove if we can't, um, you know, if you're not comfortable with the tax rate. So it's sort of a, it's just a starting point with the budget. Question. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, under expenditures on your first schedule, repayment of debt principal, uh, fair enough, but where do you show interest? Yes, the interest is shown um, sort of throughout these expenses. It's been the way it's done. <coughs> so the, um, throughout the different departments, the interest is sort of spread out, and then the principal is shown as a, as a separate amount. Oh, okay. Because um, normally, um, like for financial statement purposes, you would just expense your interest, but for a budget purposes, you have to expense the, um, the whole payment because you have to budget enough to pay mm -hmm. it. Um, so it gets a, that's sometimes the difference between a budget and the actual financial statements. So that's why it's done that way. The interest accounts for financial statement purposes are dispersed within the um, different departments, but we have to make sure we also budget for the principal payment because in terms of budget, all that matters is we have X amount of dollars we have to budget for it to be able to make our debt payment. Okay. I don't seem to understand. Yeah. Really, <laughs> so another question. Um, Amortization on buildings. Yes. Where do we see that in expenditures? Again, it's um, depending on what the capital related to, what department, the amortization is sort of throughout the expenditures, like the interest. I'm thinking specifically of this facility, of the works yard <coughs> and the firewood. Right. So that amortization, be, like I say, would be above the line in these expenditures, and that's why we show it being added back, because at this point, we don't budget for amortization. Uh, okay, so this hall, where, um, which of these lines is its amortization in? I assume it would be in recreation programs and facilities. It would be covered under the facilities. Okay. But again, I, I don't know. I mean, I could, that's a question I could take away if you wanted the answer. I could find out, show you exactly where, which accounts the amortization was in. Well, yeah, the, the detail is not important. I just want to be absolutely sure that we are, because it would seem to me the amortization, what is the amortization period for buildings, 30 years? Seems a little light at the end. Seems light. Uh, or maybe it's in a different bucket. So that leads to my next question. The 444,000 number, which does include 75 for the infrastructure master plan, what is the rest of that 444 for transportation? Um, again, that was one of the questions you had asked, and I'll have the details, which I can send out to council, but it will be in the finance, finance committee package. Okay. okay. You, any idea, Ron? I mean, a bulk of it is um, a big chunk of salaries. Uh, okay. 75,000. Salaries would salaries. have been a big gun. Infrastructure master plan, and then the general maintenance, things that wouldn't be capital in nature would be in there, so it would be a lot for repairs and maintenance. Well, General ongoing expenses of public works that are not capital in nature. Okay, well, that would, uh, transportation, I don't know what's in transportation, uh, <coughs> but uh, okay. I, I'm sure that the bottom line number is correct. It's really just making sure that if we are going to uh, distinguish between parcel tax and, and mill rate tax or something else, fee, that we, that we fund the right buckets. But uh, that will all come in the wash. Um, yeah, there was something I just wanted to point out to council, but I can't remember at the moment, but it'll come back to me as questions are asked. I uh, certainly, uh, as I mentioned, and it's just because we've put a lot of time to this, uh, especially for uh, uh, my three colleagues that I'm facing here, this really is a, um, it's a very watershed budget, it really is. And I think with the CAO and the CFO here, because you're, we're going to go away for a little while here, this really is an opportunity to ask any question that you've got or, or ask uh, CFO Rook to do a quick skinny of five minutes a page to go through it, because you know, you'll better relate to the numbers, because as, as you're reading it, you know, in the next couple of days, some of it will be lost. This will be an opportunity to take a few notes. Because when we come back next time, uh, 
the revisions uh, may be significant. The council will have a significant play in this. And uh, at, uh, what, what I'm saying is that this is a golden opportunity for questions. And even if you think it's, it, there are no funny questions, that's what I'm really trying to say here. Because there's, where uh, CFO Rook is going, the tax increase of 4% is the model that uh, Mayor Burr and I asked for the input just as a base that can move as you mentally are uh, thinking in the future. A one point increase in the general tax rate is $11,000. So, just going through the pages here, the revenue stream, which is on the page 8 of 14, doing your job, CFO. Uh, this is uh, the revenue pieces <coughs> subject to winning the grants is fairly distinguishable. There's probably, we're at the 95% range on that. The expenditures, which is in the middle of the page, uh, the mass infrastructure master plan is the biggest piece of this. Uh, as uh, Mayor Burr has pointed out, in the minutia here, the ad back depreciation amortization, same word, of almost $500,000 is buried into the numbers. So these are non-cash items, so it's a, it goes in, it goes out, it's a neutral. But really... If I could just interject, it is the cost of owning those assets for, over for the time we own them. So it's a valid expense. It's, it's a valid, ex valid expense, but uh, I, I think if we were to use a grade school analogy, we're starting at you know, grade, grade one here, and don't take that as disrespectful. The replacement issue is, is an issue that we're all going to have to face pretty quickly here. So I think going down the premises to the bottom of the page is the 14 and 15 are what are being uh, shown here. Yes. Sir. And in the Build Canada grants where the funding is. So who decides or how are these items specifically decided to be put in here and not something else? Okay, well, I'll touch on that to some extent. I will point out that the numbers uh, that are shown in the 2014 budget to be completed in 2015 and capital budgeted for 2015 that was in the previous financial plan, these numbers were decided in late 2013. That means, for the budget that was in play in 2014, that means that they may well be superseded. They may be no longer necessary. They may need to be doubled. They will need to be looked at quite carefully. They are in the current budget because they've never been rescinded, but they are expected to be spent unless we say no. Now, we are committed to the numbers that you see that are doubled up in the, in the two columns, 60,000, 150, 45, and 65 below. Those are the projects that are encapsulated in the New Building Canada Fund grant. And if we get the grant, we are committed to spend that money. I will point out that the grant is only for two thirds of the money. So we will be on the hook for 100 if we win the grant. The other thing I'll just I'll point out, just one more uh, thing is, we did ask for a 4% tax increase. That's only worth $44,000. You could say a 0% tax increase it would cost us 44 k on the revenue side. The way that this has been structured is with a 4% tax increase, fairly normal, um, a slight draw on reserves, the number is 196824 and the rest, all the other expenditure and capex raised by a tax increase. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is drawing it all from reserves. Another way of doing it is raising it all from taxes and, and being neutral on reserves. And that's why it's important to read this expenditure and income statement in concept with the balances, the savings balances. Because only when you see the impact on the balances can you tell if this is what you want. And if I might add, uh, Councillor Watterson, um, when you're saying where did this come from, like I say, we tried as best to do a base budget without making any assumptions, and then as Mayor Burr had said, you could sort of weigh the cost thinking that 1% tax equals 11,000. So you can sort of do that analysis when you decide what to add or what to take. And in terms of this capital, we are discussing this further at the Finance Committee. Like I say, we started with this capital because it had been previously committed to and was determined a year ago to be critical capital. And at the um, Finance Committee meeting, which um, we can share with you the information, from that meeting, um, we've been asked for more detail by one of the um, 
uh, resident members um, what the risk would be of not doing this capital. So that's what we will be addressing on Thursday. So that was, yes, exactly. So we didn't make this presumption on our staff staff. It was, we thought this was a good starting point. It's usually where you start with a budget. Capital that had been previously approved, so a decision had made been capital made pre by previous council that this capital was necessary, and we start with that. And there's no other capital in this budget. We've left that for um, you know count mayor and council in the finance committee mm -hmm. to well mayor and council to determine what should go into the budget. So we sort of wanted to start from the lowest base and then give you the opportunity to decide what you wanted to add to the budget. And I guess for me on this. Uh, again, on page eight, relative to the prior years, uh, the prior budgets, uh, the, the tax assessments were based on these projects in the pipeline and expected to be completed. So we've taxed the residents for them and we're holding the cash. In theory, that money is sitting in savings. Uh, not sparing your blushes, Pam. Sorry. I would point out that this is one of the best instances of the first kind of a budget I've ever seen. It's the most believable budget I've ever seen, from um, Particularly so because we, for the first time ever, we haven't even closed the 2014 books, we don't even know, but we've been given pretty accurate estimates of what we are starting 2015 with in, in this page nine, which are the numbers uh, shown as restricted and restricted in total. It gives us a basis to make some hard and fast decisions on that I can only say thanks because thank you. I believe every number here. And that's a bit, thank you, Mayor Burr, and that's a nice segue into schedule number two. <laughs> Reserves. Well, <laughs> oh, no, but I just, yeah, I, I'm not leaving this, but I just, um, I, I sort of wanted to look at them in conjunction, so no, definitely I'll answer questions and then we can tie in schedule because two as well. I want to go, I'd like to see us take another step here. We are in a transition year. We are in the process of making major changes to our infrastructure. Okay, I don't see when you talk. We talk about building assets. We talk about assets. I don't see quote unquote our water systems, the value of our water systems, our streets, our sewer systems, our water lines, any of that kind of. And this is all stuff that we're held accountable for mm -hmm. through farther farther down the road. And if we are planning on going forward and making major changes to our infrastructure, i.e., water and, and services and things like that, we need to know what our value is of our asset, our water system, our roads, and stuff like that before we can even plan on going to the next step of budgeting for improvements and things like that. It's something we need, this council needs to measure somehow so we can say in four years. We've done this, this, and this, and we've gone from here to here. Yes. We haven't got that. We haven't drawn a line in the sand and said, this is what we've got now, and this is what we're going to have in four years. And actually, oh, no, sorry, I didn't Pardon? mean to interrupt you. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Just, I should have said that off the top as well. Being a planning year, that's another reason we have kept the capital at a minimum and just started with what had been previously committed. For that very reason, the infrastructure master plan is key. That until we see the infrastructure master plan and the results and are able to do exactly what you've said, plan, prioritize what assets need to be replaced, that was another reason we had kept the capital in the initial draft very low because we didn't, as you can see, when we go to the reserves, they are very tight. And it just seems more prudent to just um, keep the capital spending to a minimum, see what comes from the infrastructure master plan, and then do our planning accordingly. And then we would enter into a long-term plan. I would suggest even longer than four years that this is what the infrastructure master plan has said that we require over the next 20 years, and this is our long-term proposal on how to fund it. So it's sort of another, it was another key component I'm just, I forgot to mention in terms of preparing this budget was. And I will also interject, Jim, that, that I'm ahead of you. I have asked in the final budget presentation that we're going to be making decisions on. Uh, we will see the balance sheet, or in municipal terms, the statement of financial position. Mm -hmm. So you will see the value of each of the assets Good. at acquisition, less depreciation, what they're worth today, so that we can tell what the impact is if we do and do not add yeah. assets, uh, if we let assets just uh, die. So that we will have that because I started off by saying, unless you know the impact of the budget on, on your savings, also affect your assets. Um, it's not, it's incomplete. Well, I had on the top of my head what I was going to point out, but I've lost it again, so keep it. <laughs> you can use your pen next time. Yeah.
That's fine. That answers so, my question. I wanted to touch on the reserves, but I'm not closing off Schedule 1. I mean, we can definitely go back if you think of any other questions. What um, the second schedule shows is our reserve balance. So we're starting from the last time, the audited number, the uh, 2013 number. We've estimated, and I would say this was 95 to 99 percent accurate, what we would be drawing from the reserves at the completion of the 2014 year end to pay for um, the capital. It does seem like a large number, but it's actually substantially lower than what was budgeted last year. Um, in the 2014 budget, we were planning to take almost $900,000 from reserves. It's just a timing thing in terms of the completion of the um, community center and all this capital that we have referred to, the 2014 committed capital that didn't get spent in 2014. So um, that, that does get very accounting, like it can be hard to follow. But basically, what we're saying is we're predicting at the end of 2014 that our reserves will be about 1.1 million. So if we do the minimum amount of capital um, that is referenced in Schedule 1, we will draw down the reserves by 196,000. And we had also um, had, we taxed for an item in 2014 for um, a legal contingency. And that hasn't come to fruition yet, but because we've taxed for the money, we really should put it aside. Um, we've just called it an operating contingency because it's not committed to the legal. If the results of this case or any other type of legal case, if we don't need all that money, then we would just have put it aside. So we haven't lost mm. the money. And then the estimated sewer accumulated surplus with the separate funds of sewer and water, solid waste and general fund, we do like to track the surpluses related to each of those. We haven't been doing it for the last few years. It hasn't been a requirement, but it's something we'd like to do in 2015 is at, towards the goal of having water self-funding and sewer self-funding individually track the surpluses. And we feel that sewer is the one fund that does have a surplus of about 150, so we'd like to just isolate that as well. So the net reserves we have to work with is a total of 745,000. So to keep this in perspective, um, again, in all these things we're planning to do in 2015, looking at our reserve policy, it's sort of a generally good idea to try and keep two months of working capital in your reserves, which would be about $500,000, just for emergencies. And um, I remind everyone, before my time, but 2011, Kelvin Grove, there was the water main breaks, and they cost $360,000. And that's not capital, so we're not able to draw from our restricted reserves for that. So something like that would have to come from unrestricted surplus. So that's why, just in general, we like to keep about 500000 I mean, that's just a suggestion. We don't have a reserve policy yet. So keeping that in mind. and. Um, the other thing we've shown in the budget is we've shown the Build Canada grant of 246000 And this is a bit unusual to do that because we haven't got the grant yet. We're not sure if we will get it. We won't know until October. So we've chosen to show it, and then we show the capital um, that would fund from that. But it's a bit unusual in that if we don't get the grant, um, there is, we would still do the capital. So it would mean that potentially, if we didn't get the grant, we'd have to draw another $246,000 from our reserves to pay for that, and that would drop the balance down to about 500000 So this is just to give you sort of a sense of how much money we kind of, although it's not cash, how much reserves we have on the side to, um, to pay for things. And this is a number that is really critical during budget purposes because we, in an ideal world, we would be in a position that we would tax to put money into reserves to build up the reserves for future acquisitions, and we're not in that position yet. Can I just interject? Do not assume in any way that because it was previously approved, the, the monies that we had committed to prior capital is necessary, is, is set as done. We can kill those projects if we so choose, if we no longer believe they are vital, if we think they've been superseded by other things, if we think we've got better use for the money, if we don't want to spend the money at all. So these previously committed projects which are subject to the New Building Canada Fund grant, which is an additional wrinkle and commitment, can potentially leave the table. And we, I mean, um, and we have those projects on um, the agenda for the Finance Committee meeting. We'll be revisiting them. The Public Works Manager is preparing a report at the request. It was requested by one of the Finance Committee members, as I had mentioned, to address um, the implications of not doing these projects. We have um, business cases on all of them, and <coughs> that will be coming forward at the Finance Committee meeting, which will be shared with Council. 
So the grant won't be awarded until October 2015. That's correct. So would that not mean that the projects won't start until 2016? There's a chance that th that would be true, or they may not start until 2015, which is often um, typical with larger capital projects when you're waiting for grants. The other implication is you usually don't get the grant. You only get part of it up front, if any. You do your reporting at the end and get some or all of the money at the end. So we start these projects prior to even having received the cash. Um, so so there we are start the project before? So as soon as we know that we've been awarded the grant? Yes. So that's why it's in the 2015 expenditure? Exactly. Because that's also when we would commit to the projects. And it's quite typical for larger projects to straddle years. I mean, we could very well start the project, you know, depend on a lot of things, weather. But, you know, if we knew if it comes out a bit earlier, let's say August or September, then, you know, the idea would be we'd start the projects right away. But they wouldn't be completed until the end of the year. And like I say, that's very typical. Operating is all within one year. Salaries that are budgeted are all paid in that year. But with capital, especially the larger projects, they often straddle years. But you do your best. To, that's why we actually do, when we do the budget and do the bylaw, it's a five-year plan. So we would take into account the timing of those projects and the expenses that would fall within each year. That's, in fact, why they're on the, the historical ones are on this budget, yeah. because they're multi-year projects. They happened not to have started, but they were kicked off for a long time, which didn't actually lay down the dollars. The machines didn't start doing It may be that these things have been superseded. We're expecting a report. It may be that we think there's better use of that money. But right now, they're approved. They're ongoing. But they approved by previous council. In, in September 2013. Based on what we do then. Yes. They were approved, but they're approved by bylaw. So there's actually they actually are in a bylaw. <coughs> you know, that's not to say they can't be changed, but it's a little more than just council approval. It's yeah. the formality <coughs> of the twenty fourteen to twenty eighteen financial plan bylaw. Just tell they me about the bylaw thing. If we if we then we were going to eventually pass a, a bylaw. Mm -hmm. And if the bylaw did not contain project X, would project X be explicitly off board we have to repeal the bylaw to put it in? It actually, the, the very nature of the bylaw is when you, the 2014-2018 the bylaw is in effect until the 2015-2019 bylaw replaces it. So as part of that process, the prior year's bylaw is repealed and then it is replaced by the new bylaw. Okay. And okay. Your, your future years, I mean, you do your best to predict what's going to happen That's in good. the future years, but every time you do the new bylaw, you change what's in the subsequent four years because it's just your best guess at that time. The really only locked down number, so to speak, is the current year's budget. So philosophically, what is actually the point of issuing a five-year budget in that, in most cases, the three year beyond the current one is a guess anyway? It is, but if it, it is a very good exercise because it forces you to look beyond the current year. And because so many projects are multi, um, multi-year, for example, in prior year with other another municipality, a budget I did, you would request from the departments what they wanted, and you'd flow it through your five-year plan, your first draft. And we used to joke that the first draft you needed a 75% tax increase in the second year to do it. And it, it is a good exercise. I mean, as funny as that is, it's a good exercise to make you realize that you just, you know, you really have to make hard, hard choices as a council in terms of what goes ahead, especially for smaller municipalities. And we'll have the advantage when we do next year's advantage or disadvantage of having had the results of the infrastructure master plan and have a more concrete idea of what we need to put in our four-year plan. And it sort of forces you to do the long-term planning, which everyone should do, but I think that is the main reason why. the um, So the four years of the five-year plan a little bit more of a guess and a little more generic, but it is an excellent exercise to go through. So you're not just thinking in terms of 12 month periods. So to recap, and you can correct me yes. on this. So um, again, I, I just, there, this is, March is gonna be budget month. Bottom right hand number is the <coughs> theoretical cash balance available to fund everything that's staff has put forward here. So it's funded here, and that's what's, that's what's left in the till, 746, to the point here about the, the grants, if we, which are 246, so if you take, if the, if the projects go ahead and the grants do not come forward, then you take 246 off the number, which puts it down to the half million dollars, which is what the CFO has said is the tipping point for uh, emergency working capital needs. But then would we not take off some money from expenditure as well? 
if the grant doesn't go through, because you allocated money against the grant right, if the grant doesn't go through, then we wouldn't be spending. Uh, I, we didn't. I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe we picked a vehicle for the grants. It was the work needed doing first, and then the grants came along second. Yes. Yeah. At the time, we were going to do them anyway. So that's the that's the piece. So I, I'm. Oh, so uh, no Councilor Wallace, I'm just drawing to your attention yes. because I guess that I'm more <coughs> familiar with this. I just nobody wants to be blindsided or not. I'm just really kind of adding a bit more color right. along with Mayor Burr with his parts on this too and, and the CFO. So um, the key components on this is that uh, we are a, a tiny budget municipality with some extraordinary requirements being. Uh, which is the largest largest pieces here are the IMP and the OCP, you know, the 20,000 for the emergency plan. I mean, you know, we're over a quarter million dollars here that just didn't exist a year before or or in the past. I just remembered what I was going to say, so I'll check it now because it's Please, to that point. Please, I'm finished. As political animals representing the will of the community, we need to look at we need to raise ourselves up a little bit here. And what we see then is that the Small Communities Grant has gone up $100,000. We get a gas tax grant for the first time of $53,000. That's $150,000 in new revenue that we didn't have to do anything for that we got for nothing, simply for the, the being here. There's some other grants that are new. We didn't get the, the whole grants, but those were one-offs. These other ones are regular income that we'll get every year. The Small Communities Grant changes every year. If I was a resident and being critical, I would say you want to raise taxes 4%, you want to draw down reserves a fairly significant amount, not a huge amount, but somewhat. We've got $150,000 in new revenue that we never had before. You're telling us this is a planning year, not a spending year, and yet we get what they perceive to be nothing for it. They're going to say, we've got $150,000 infrastructure master plan. We should have done that long ago. I'm already hearing that. Um, you need to be aware of the political consequences <coughs> of, of choices. So Pam correctly says that, uh, that she would say something like $500,000, that's two months worth of working capital. We spend about $250,000 a month. To me, that sounds a little unconservative. That sounds, uh, you know, four months working capital is a good number for me. Um, so if, if you want to be conservative like me, how are we going to fund this? There's one thing we haven't embraced yet, and that's loans. Ron will uh, tell you the details, but I'll just mention it. Long term loans, too late. We wouldn't get enough because the, the current intake is closed. Uh, we wouldn't be ready for the, the next intake. We wouldn't get a long term loan for a year. But there are short term loans available. The cost is interest only. They, they are essentially they're sweet loans, they're, they're, yeah. they're rigid loans. There are overdrafts. Um, if we elected to go that route, we could maintain a prudent level of, of savings. We'd borrow whatever funds we needed for, to support cash flow. We'd have the facility set up. Pam's going to tell you next the number that's going to make your, your, your hair curl when she points it out. Um, so we have three elements to play with tax increase, drawn reserves, and loans. And those are things that we are going to have to balance politically. And, oh, and, and giving the uh, sharp pencil back to staff. With respect regarding the loans, I would say that actually isn't an option. I have done a bit more research. The short-term loan still takes a long time to get through the MFA. But and it is it's still, um, still really only an option for, and it's only suitable for capital. You can get a very short-term um, Revenue. Revenue. Thank you. Revenue, revenue anticipation, which we may have to do next year. Because we get so much of our revenue in with the, ta um, with the property taxes, we can actually be short of cash for a couple of months. And then that is a short-term boring you can do, revenue anticipation, and then you just pay it back as soon as you get your property taxes. But my also concern would be when we get the infrastructure master plan, it is my assumption, which I think is a fairly good one, <laughs> that when we see what we have to do, the only way we can accomplish it is through debt. And then you get into the long-term debt. It takes about a year's lead time to get it. We have a debt threshold, so the maximum debt we could borrow is about, I believe, about $5 million. 
So um, I, I just don't think short-term debt is an option for a variety of reasons. I think at, at this point we need to wait, save all our boring capacity for when we actually get the infrastructure master plan and see that we have millions of dollars in infrastructure we have to replace in a short term, short time. I'd be that's happy to bring this. That's the purpose of us having quote unquote a planning year mm -hmm. to get all this stuff, uh, house in order to so make mm -hmm. sure we're ready to move yes. and do that and have our plan. Infrastructure master plan is coming together. We've got something and it's <coughs> solid. And that goes back to my question about asset management mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's what we've got what we're worth. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd be, uh, I think our next uh, council meeting on budget, I would project is going to be quite robust. Uh, we should have our kind of a one minute potential for borrowing so that everybody can see what the really big picture is and what the big number would be because that, that may be part of the mix. We're getting conflicting information on what you can and can't borrow, so, so we will nail that down in the yeah. finance committee. I will also say, I hear the word money uh, a year a lot. I'll just point out that beyond the expenditure part of the budget, we are currently on this budget planning on spending $393,000 plus $173,000 in capex on infrastructure. To me, that's quite a lot of money. It's half a million bucks in, in cement and steel. To me, that doesn't sound a lot like planning. That sounds a lot like investing. It was previously committed. Is it still needed? We will hear. Um, I like the concept of a planning year. I also like the concept of a community focused year, uh, to, for all kinds of good political reasons. Uh, this being an election year, this being people, people's expectations are different. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge as, as we get to it. We will have lots of opportunities to flesh this out. But let's, let's bear in mind that there are, are multiple variables to this thing that we're going to have to juggle to get it right. And I guess the only schedule that we haven't discussed, I just wanted to sort of explain the supplementary request. So these were um, requests that had come in from the departments. Um, we actually had Fire and Public Works prepare their budget, and we previewed it, and we did make some cuts. Anything that we had cut, we would then show on the supplemental list. So we have operating expenses. And then we have supplemental capital requests. And then staff have made some recommendations <coughs> in terms of what we thought should go ahead. Um, um, so I don't know if there's any specific questions about it. Um, just the municipal grants, we have put in the base budget, the amount we paid for municipal grants last year. And then I believe at tonight's council meeting, council will be looking at the municipal grants. So we've just put in a ballpark of an additional $5,000 just from some feedback I had got. Mm -hmm. But basically, anything tonight you approve for municipal grants over and above last year's amount will have to be added to the budget. Um, there is um, some software for some laptops that are in capital that have actually stopped working in public works. And then in terms of the fire department, the reason we had um, added this in, we stripped away all of the capital requests from fire, but um, the ones that we've highlighted, they're ongoing capital. It's ongoing capital maintenance, not really for anything extra. In fact, you could argue a case could be made for all of the capital that they've requested in terms of ongoing capital maintenance. I mean, things wear out, so you just have to replace them every year. I don't think it's possible to just say, you know, we can't replace any capital. And down in public works, we had um, the May's work order model. We had, um, we, it just would give us overall better reporting. And the highway tank roof removal, and the, um, and then we had the, the laptops. And then up above, we had the, um, the cost of, the, the operating cost of those laptops. So I was looking for, oh, I missed it, the swim float. The reason we put the swim float in, again, that's just for the residents in terms of they've had the swim float and it's gone. and. We think that would be. The residents get one swim float out yes. of the budget. So we're thinking that. Um, I'm All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, the buns were left at lunch. Yes. But um, I say this is just staff recommendations. It was just sort of to put it in perspective. If we just take a minimum amount from this, it's sixty-eight thousand dollars, which equates to a six point two percent tax increase. So just at high level, if we were to keep the budget the way it is, add in these staff recommendations, we're now at a ten percent tax rate if we don't take anything else from so reserves. So you don't have to worry about the cost of the beach remediation, the mayor's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, uh, I, let's just 
for those hard of hearing. So on the piece here, the staff recommendation is page 10 of 14. Uh, the $629,000 of asks, uh, staff is recommending about 10% of that at 68,000, but even that using $11,000 per point, uh, if that was accomplished without going to reserves at uh, the 4%, which is loaded in the page eight top line, uh, it would be uploaded by another six points so that this could be part of the 10% tax increase. 10% tax increase. Is that what you had? Okay. You had mentioned earlier, these are needs. If we're replacing things that are worn or broken. So actually, you do need to fund this, right? But that's with regard to the fire. So I was explaining why staff mm -hmm. recommended the fire. So the, the fire is in, yeah, the staff recommendations. And you are right. I mean, it is things that... They're operational needs, they're substantial. They're not nice to have. No. Yeah. yeah, like that's no. where we sort of... Um, I mean, I would argue even... You could argue even some of the things in the regular requests are beyond nice to have, but that's where the tough decisions mm -hmm. come in to affect. So um, that was exactly why staff recommended the fire that they did, was because it is ongoing maintenance. I will just point out one thing. I don't suggest that we, we debate this at infinitum now. Um, Ron and I have already seen this. Uh, I've already taken a cut at this that will go now to the Finance Committee. Um, I've already made some sort of operational requests. You know, if, if, we, if we've got a gold plate and hose, would it last three times as long? Well, I can ask that one. But uh, some of the types of requests. I'll just point out one thing here is that Public Works requests an extra headcount for 77.5. That's not in here, but I would suggest that uh, we need to look at that very carefully. Uh, yes. Can I just ask Pam to speak to that for a minute? Yes, I apologize. I should have. Um, it was on the Finance Committee agenda, and I mean, meant to bring it up here. Um, we had just put it on sort of to plant the seed for next year, and we hadn't done a really in-depth analysis. And when we did the in-depth analysis, the savings in overtime in no way supports the um, the FTE. That's not to say a business case can't be put forward maybe for next year, but in terms of this year, we would have to add that to the budget in order to pay for it. Um, so there'd be no have, savings in overtime? No. That's what our analysis is showing. There'd be very little. We budget $25,000 a year for overtime and we have stayed within that budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not to say by looking at a work plan and taking a longer period of time to look at it, let's <coughs> say for the 2016 budget, a strong case can't be made. But initially, I introduced it by saying we could have almost that much savings mm -hmm. in overtime to have the extra staff member, and that was incorrect. Okay, well, I'm surprised because the, the analysis that Mandy sent around uh, a week and a half ago said that about a third of our public work hours were overtime hours. Last year. Last yes. year. But we would, have to, we would have to course that trend over several years. I just gave you what Nikki's numbers were for last year. That's true. Do you think there was an aberration? Uh, no, I think we had three PEP events, and you know, we, last year was a, so an interesting year. Nikki came on board and some things changed. And, yeah. Oh, okay. So, what is that? Uh, sorry, Pam, you said how many overtime hours are we budgeting? Um, we budgeted about 25,000, and the quick analysis um, that Haley did indicated that we were close to that number. And that 25,000 is how much of the total? Um, Their total? Yeah. Yes, I, I don't know oh, that offhand. I have to find out. Um, uh, 5% sounds like. Oh, it'd be. Base five and then going north for another 75 for on call and another 20 in benefits. So yeah, but I don't count on call. That's just a fee involved well, in having safety people available. I can take a look at the, um, okay. the labor so model we'll and I can bring it so to the finance can, committee. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, so what percentage so, uh, that is. I, I, yeah. I mentioned it, so I had thought that we could add that person for savings. But yes. Uh, no, so yes, and good. that was um, unfortunately, I gave incorrect information at the last finance right. committee meeting. I think, as Mayor Burr has pointed out to my, my colleagues who are a bit less familiar, I mean, this trying to get a lot of, lot of uh, detailed information skinned into you, uh, I would suggest that the next, uh, with what staff, is, what staff has done, is taken a hit for the team and given us the data. And they presented it in a way that it has to be funded and this is their, their best cut at the wish list without it going to council for their input. Uh, as Mayor Burr would tell you, council has the final say, but staff does the prep work, staff does the recommendations, they meet with their people, they come up with the best wish list and do the, 
do the primary work. So there, uh, there's lots to discuss with, without you know picking a, a favorite piece of it right today. Uh, I would think that when it goes to the finance committee for the next blush and it comes back to council, I think that's the time when everybody should be <coughs> be fully hydrated for that meeting, and because that's <coughs> probably where we're going to give staff some very strong direction. So I think in terms of the uh, high level piece for the budget, I think the CFO and the whole village team has done an incredible job giving you the big picture here. Um, and, and I would wait till the finance committee um, and the offshoot of, of the investigation that comes out of that meeting uh, is put forward to you. Good. Um, anybody want to give any sort of guidance to staff in terms of, I, I'll tell you what I said already in the finance committee meeting, uh, so I'll essentially repeat that to staff as well. I don't like this budget. I don't like the 10% tax increase. I don't like the, the appearance of nothing in there for the community except a swim float. By the $150,000 infrastructure master plan, it's not very sexy to the community. There's there's very little in here for our constituents. I'm well aware of the, the reality, but I don't like it. Um, I'm looking for a more community-focused budget this year. Uh, is that achievable? That's all another question. If it is in fact the case that we can't rely on loan funds to fund some sexier spending, we either don't do it or we draw down reserves. <coughs> I will say that strategically, this is nothing we can model today. We are looking at increasing revenue, meaning our loan cap goes up. We are looking at increasing the tax base slowly. That means that our revenue goes up slowly. We are looking at raising the mill rate on certain classes of taxpayer um, whose initials are N and C uh, and um, ECH and all the other utilities running through our town. So there are opportunities to raise revenues, but slowly. <coughs> the revenue number you see here, 1479505, that's this year's number. Next year's number will be north of that. The, the year after that will be better and better and better. It is a strategic goal, okay, not just one, the piece of paper, that we have to raise the tax base. So, bearing all that in mind, that's what I see. I see that we are doing everything we possibly can with what we were given and we have no choice in some of these matters, especially when it comes to infrastructure spending and we need to marry it to a point where there's, there's, there's a good chunk in there for residents to say, okay, there's some nice to haves that we can do that don't cost a lot, but we can move forward and do that with what we've got and at the same time our major focus has to be on fixing our infrastructure, the water system mainly more than anything else right now. And so it, it's good news, bad news, but the reality is, yeah, maybe there's a bit of bad in there, but we, we, we've talked about this before. We need to make sure we keep a little bit of incentive in there for people to buy it to get the residents on side is what we're doing. I agree with that. I know I'm being able to talk again, I apologize. One more thing. Under the Mayor's not actually Mayor's Council, accelerated water leakage remediation program 20, which has not been included by staff, that is a number that we have, we cannot, we will not, we are not going to run out of water this summer. The only way we can do anything explicit about that, planning-wise, is to spend some money on leak detection and fixing it. Therefore, that number needs to move in. Now, we're talking uh, another 2% if we're going to do all through tax rates. So there are things that are not chosen by staff that are strategic to the village or strategic to this council that probably do need to be in and the water leak remediation is one of them. You're talking about, sorry, just a bump up from what Nikki already has on her annual work plan for her water leakage uh, detection program? I don't know what that is because I haven't asked for that, so I, d I don't know what's in the work plan. But it, it was in her work plan that came forward a, a couple of weeks ago, I'm fairly sure. The one that I asked to get put into a matrix? Yeah, but all the information was there, I've broken down my month. So I, I'm just, just so I'm clear, when I go back and talk to Nikki, are you talking about a bump up from what's already in her plan? I, yes, is okay. the short answer. Thank um, you. Why? Because we've got until June to get it right. Maybe July. Because after that, we may 
And maybe that's it. Then we'll make it fun beautiful. But indicate it's our way. So now, it, just as an interjection, the, the infrastructure committee tasked me and Greg Garland with looking at methods so we could start localizing where leakage is. Greg and I, in our discussions, have very quickly realized that measuring it isn't going to help fix the problem. And so what we're actually going to recommend to the infrastructure committee the next time it happens is to drop the metering program altogether. We don't have time this year. Rather spend all the time and money on fixing leaks. Because we have them. Right now the indications are leakage is around somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. Even if everybody switched off their tap, our tanks would run dry in 36 hours. And if the tank is all we have, that's bad. Conservation program is of no consequence. This is all maybe more detail than we need for now, but I'm saying that there are potentially items in here that based on input from public works and, and other strategic opportunities that staff have not been aware of until just this, this very meeting, um, we may need to spend some money, we may need to cut some meat. If you look at this list, it's not a heck of a lot to cut. The only thing I can see that potentially could be cut here is the highway tank pre-roof, and that would be done by abandoning the tank. I don't even know if that's feasible. <laughs> You're right, but but the we have staff in place that have skills and skill set that can be utilized in some situations, and, and and they've got work to do. But at the same time, and we're budgeted for that work, and sometimes if we have to make hard decisions, we may have to make hard decisions and shift some of the stuff around. You know, to the point where we're dealing with the water leaks and stuff like that with our staff when we it when and if we can. I'm not saying we can do it in every case, but we can do it in some cases. So that's Nikki's. That's her. And I'm yes. sure she'll. You know. I do know that November is too late. Yeah, I agree. That much on the show. Yeah. I think for you know the chiefs here, we should move off this topic. I, I'm not trying to close because I leave certainly um, Councilor Waterson and Councilor Bean. Staff is apolitical. They they don't have any pet projects uh, on this as near as I can tell. They they're taking a hit for the team coming forward, uh, which is their job. Thank you, staff. Uh, council's going to get uh, some partially chewed numbers the next time we see. And I, I, tr I truly ask that everybody have a good look. Think about what they really think is important. I mean, for uh, Mayor Burt, talk about the point. Um, you know, and whether we're political or <coughs> apolitical, everybody is going to have a viewpoint of what is important to them. Take the numbers away, play with them a little bit, and you know, I just think about them until we come forward again. Uh, closing note, a quick one, because we just came out with this council priority list. Mm -hmm. It would seem that very little of our expenditure will go towards meeting priority one or two, so perhaps when we're reviewing this, we might, you know, be able to put okay. something in. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, what's, that's almost like what's the point. And I think well, I, we should shift three to one. Or mm -hmm. I might add, just in terms of this is a bit of an unusual budget year, just it usually is delayed in an election year and um, with me coming new onto the role as well. Um, we do have a timeline around this. We pretty much have to have locked down 2015 numbers by the end of March, just in terms to meet statutory requirements of the bylaw being due. And I would maybe su suggest that um, that document sort of feeds more into the 2016 budget, 2017, 2018 budget, just because I, I totally respect you know, the point that you want council priorities to help guide you. And I'm not saying ignore them this year, but this might be a transition year where just given, you know, we have basically four weeks to finalize these numbers to meet the statutory requirements. It might be a little more difficult to marry those two, but definitely that would be the process for next year. The whole process would be started earlier in early fall. We would just get to start doing preliminary budgets just to give you a sense. And there would be normally much more time to talk about things. It's sort of ironic in the first year you're doing a budget. It's also the time you have by far the smallest amount of time to do it. It's just one of sort of the ironies of budgeting in the first year of a, after an election. I think to my piece on this one, this is going to come back to council depending on uh, when we choose to be our, our, our next meeting or it's a special meeting, <coughs> budget meeting, whatever it is, if, if the end of March is, is, is the mandate to do this. Uh, the Finance Committee will see this on Thursday. 
Um, they'll do what they do. It'll be part of the public record, and so it'll be for the CFO and the mayor to decide on the next on the next budget meeting. Because I I think then we can all bring our thoughts to the table. And may I also suggest, um, if there are any questions, because I realize this was a lot of information at once, in terms of the best approach, would it be maybe to email me and then I re respond in the email and copy all the counsel, or would that be appropriate? Um, Is that what you're comfortable with? What's I think I am. Best for your process? Just in terms of the timeline, it might, because my concern is, I mean, we. We're almost the next, we, there's actually not a council meeting scheduled for the rest of March, so obviously we'll be having a special council meeting to talk about budget by saving all of the questions out. For example, Mayor Burr has given me some questions which I will respond to, will be part of the Finance Committee meeting, and then I could share them with everyone as well. Because one of the questions he asked was asked here as well as the breakdown of one of the transportation numbers. And um, Councillor Waterston has asked about the administrative services, so questions like that. I think, you know, they expect I wouldn't be able to answer them immediately, but hopefully within a couple of days. And if you are comfortable with that approach, I'm trying to think the best way to get the information out there, answer the questions, um, as opposed to saving them all for the next council meeting. I'm concerned that oh, will slow the process down. The next council meeting is, is too late. Mm -hmm. uh, Shall we not say that? I'm sure we all try to attend the next finance meeting. Thursday night at 6. Yeah. Thursday night at 6. What you will be having mm -hmm. at the finance meeting? What new will be happening at that point? Um, I think, oh, I'm sorry, I'm answering no, your on. question, I apologize. <laughs> I think quite a bit. I've just done the agenda. Um, there were several questions raised that we'll be addressing, um, four or five questions. Um, they will be your version of the budget will be presented. Um, I, I think there actually is a fair amount of new material. Yeah. In terms of, and also it just gives you a chance, I, I apologize, to... Um, have another look at it for a couple of days and maybe bring new questions to the Finance Committee, which I could take away and answer. I think that's smart. Uh, I think we need to do that. Can you guys make it uh, seven or six? Six. 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 On Thursday. Six on Thursday. I think that would be smart. That would give us uh, one more formal look prior to this. I think there would be one more special meeting, right? Well, we, we can call as many special yeah, meetings as okay. we like. But so calendar the calendar realities. I think, I think you get the, uh, the members are less familiar, we'd get a real flavor, because the uh, FC members are very familiar with this, so they're running, and uh, you know, the, the current plan and the alternate plan would be, I would say, robustly discussed. And that's gonna save council a lot of work. Yeah, one, yeah, a week. It's gonna put your timeline <laughs> out of panic realm into reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I think we need to, I think we need to do that. Is everybody good with that? Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Uh, I think we can wrap it up now. I think that's great, Pam. Again, fantastic. Really, really well done. I'm, I'm so pleased we're having to um, to handle through this. And with that, we will um, take that one off the list. And why are these guys here? Do I see them on, on the Well, thing? it's a public meeting. Oh. So, do you, have, do you guys have something to say? In the in camera no. meeting, Lions Bay mm -hmm. Fire Department uh, is on okay. the agenda. It's, in, it's on a later, later piece of the agenda. Okay, good, thanks. I just wanted to, if you guys have, were in a hurry, I'd move things around. Uh, 7C, Village Hall Renovation, Walkway Report and Deficiencies. Maybe. You actually asked me to put this on. Um, so, this is a revised walkway drawing, which I have emailed you previously, but I have to apologize because when we had the special meeting in January, and this is not the drawing that I had. I had the initial drawing, which was the higher <coughs> quote. So the quote is still accurate. We still have the lowest quote, but this is the drawing that that lower quote was based on. So this is very clear. So we're all kind of budget. We are, I think, to the weather. Looks familiar. Um, and the reason um, for this versus the other drawing you've seen, the other drawing didn't zigzag across the front lawn, it just went up the side. It, the reduced costs were the fact that we weren't going to have to now level that grade um, against the wall. It was too steep, so to bring that up, that's where the cost was saved. So there's a cost saving? No. On the, the no. <laughs> not now. Not, not, right not since price. you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right not right since price. you've seen it. Okay. Yeah. That's all I have on the run. Um, and then
unless there's any questions. What colour is the end row? We haven't picked the paint yet. I will happily invite you to select a sample when we have them. Mandy, I was wondering, is that exit? It's not. It's old. No, it doesn't need to be, but what if there was like a, you know, a But fire? can't you get around this way? So under this project, yes, you can. Um, and it was, was brought up. Fire at that it was brought up. <coughs> well, I'd like to think there's a four inch drop out that door. It's, so it's only four inches. Yeah. I'd like to think that if there were other people in this yeah, building, they might assist a wheelchair out the door yeah. or, or the person in the wheelchair. Yeah. Um, we don't have to bring that exit to code. Um, it's certainly not as part of this scope, but I don't see that it would take thousands and thousands of dollars to put a ramp on that four inch drop. So, you know, something to talk about later, perhaps, but at this point, there's no plans for that. Mm -hmm. well, that's the concerns that we're hearing, like, is it part of the fire, fire code? Uh, is there anything that we're doing to help evacuate uh, uh, disabled people from the building? Yeah, so the building inspector has in indicated to us, and as part of this whole project, that this suffices under the code. We have to bring it up to 60% accessibility, yeah. and this will do that. Okay. That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay, that's good on the walkway. Uh, what was the other piece? Deficiencies. Yeah, there's still a few being addressed. He's, we have him for the rest of this week, so he's in and out. They're onesies, twosies? Nothing yeah, there's some paint touch-ups. You see there's some green tape on the wall there. There's some paint touch-ups to happen. There's a few in the kitchen. Um, some of the doors are still being rekeyed, uh, odds, and, odds and ends. He's got, a, he's got a list that he's working with. Are we going to build a screen around the air conditioning unit up there? Uh, I don't know if it's on the list, but we certainly can. Well, that might be a volunteer project. We need, we need to ultimately have a list of available volunteer projects, um, and that can be one of them. Yeah, so he's here for, uh, like I said, the rest of this week, finishing up all the stuff on the list. We have him till Friday. Great. Okay, Any, anybody else on Village Hall Renovation? Right, moving on to D. Uh, portfolio Committees, Member Appointments, page 13. And this should say on this recommendation rather than resolution. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking that was... I, didn't use that. I apologize. Okay, Helen, this is yours. So actually, I had previously mentioned that um, these were the three... Members, community members, community members that um, I've tapped to be on the community committee. So they're all highly devoted to our village, highly experienced with different, you know, different areas of expertise. And I think, um, quite, I mean, Ruth was a previous councillor, and well, we all know her. Oliver Gansky brings, um, I mean a design background as well as an architectural background and then Megan Jury would be the uh, resident advocate, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. that okay, so um, you'd like to take this Actually, recommendation to... Community advocates. Community advocate. I like it. Who are the three, three or more council members? You, me? I forget who you had assigned, was it? Jim, I think. Jim. Was it Jim? Okay. You're okay with that? Yeah. And we were thinking, I don't know, meeting wise. Actually, that's on the terms of reference. We can talk about that later. That's later. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so we'll take this to council meeting? Yes, we can bring it back. Okay. Great. That knocks off all three. Um, so we'll move on to item number eight public questions and comments prior to closing the meeting. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, seeing none, we'll move on and uh, we can resolve in a, in a strategy committee? No, so we can we... recommend. Okay, oh, sorry. sorry, the one resolution we can pass is going in camera, yes. Uh, I didn't know that's where you were. Power. I was switching through papers here. Sorry. Okay, so I uh, will, um, I'll move it in a minute. The, the motion is to resolve that the Village of Lions Bay Council does Close the March 3rd, 2015 Council Strategy Committee meeting to the public on the basis of matters to be considered <coughs> under the following sections of the Community to Russia 91. A part of the Council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following C Labour relations 
for other employee relations. I move to close. Second. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. So the meeting is now. So we'll be reporting out that we'll be bringing forward a resolution tonight about the capital fire budget. Over. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And what about the that Fred will discuss with the fire department on, on several of the issues present. No, we don't have to talk about that because those that's all remains enclosed. Fred is going to be working on some stuff sure. with the fire department. Fred Relationships will, yeah. with the fire department. The liaise with well, the no, fire department. specific reporting yeah. on, on things that they need. Okay, so that's that. Mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that we'll come up with a policy guide their future uh, expenditure against a potentially expanded budget. Yes. To accommodate uh, their donated funds. That's right. Like I say, it's a, it's a whole variety of things that are all intertwined. So it's the fire department would have an issue in terms of all of their accounting and their budgeting. Great. Good. Okay, good. Addressing a lot of concerns that the fire chief had as well. Yeah, some of them are valid. It's, yeah. We have we, the same concerns, we just have different solutions. <laughs> We'll come up with a unified solution. So uh, we'll revert to open meeting, and that's it. We're adjourned. <laughs>